Hey, welcome to the Dripping Stone Podcast, a podcast with two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I am Kyle. You are Kyle. I am today. How's it going? Uh, you know, I've, I've kind of settled into it. Yeah, oh, the day or like being Kyle? Just being Kyle. <laughs> It's took a good number of years to <laughs> find that sweet spot of being God. I think I'm there. It started one rainy night in 1983. And then, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Skip a few decades and here we are. Here we are. Kyle, today, we are drinking something. You know it. That's how every episode Starts. Generally starts. Yeah. yeah usually. Is there, is there any episode we've done so far where I we haven't I think there have started? been a couple of episodes where we introduced the topic. Yeah. Because it related to the drink. Okay. But we always start with a drink. Sure. And that, that's kind of like what we're known for. Yeah. We but, start with a drink. Yeah. Just chatting. It's the format. Talk about the drink a little bit. Yeah. And then we talk about whatever's on our mind. Indeed. And uh, you've already read the title for this episode. So what's on our mind is Marvel. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff just came out and was released. A lot of news. In terms of news, exactly. Yeah, a lot of excitement. Okay, so before we get into that exciting news, yep, you want a drink? You know it. Okay, so I've got a, a bottle for us here. This is the River Set Rum, finished in rye casks. Ooh. Yeah. This is by our friends at the BR Distilling Company. Interesting. You, you know those guys. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, they're the ones who do the Blue Note. Is it really? It, it is. Same mm. distillery? Same distillery. Same distilling company. I don't know if this is actually distilled in Tennessee. Actually, I, I know it's not. This is a product of Venezuela. Oh. But it is um, aged. Yeah. Aged it is and bottled. Aged in rye barrels. Very uh, interesting. It is bottled, right. It is bottled by the BR Distilling Company. It's a pretty bottle. Look, Dude, I mean, it's basically the same bottle. You, it's behind you. The, the, right well, I was going to say the, the perfect tasting to this to compare is yeah. the rye three. A rye aged right. in rum barrels. This is a rum, a rum aged, aged in rye, rye barrels. Yeah, it might not be a bad idea. That's kind of interesting. Do we still have They're the probably like a similar proof. Do we still have some of that rye three later? I've around? got the same clothes on. Well, yeah, but these episodes are released the other way around. This one's coming out first. No. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell you. Look that. forward <laughs> to the rye three competition. Right, we recorded it backwards, but this one's coming out before the other one. Well, what do you know? Yeah. Well, I. That I mean, you know a lot. I know days. nothing. About That's this not stuff. true. <laughs> Kyle. This is our first rum on the podcast. I think you're right. I think we decided that again prior the to aesthetic. Re- prior to it, it does the rum runner aesthetic. Yeah, I, I've got a very floral Hawaiian esque <laughs> shirt do. on. I felt like you know we're we're starting to hit the end of the summer, right? At least here phase. in Florida, sure. Yeah, sure. so you know, go all out. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and and on a rum for sure. Our, our viewers on YouTube. We'll see your your beautiful yep. shirt. The tubes I see it. of you. I see it right now. Yeah, I I appreciate it. It's loud. Yeah, but it's it, it not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I as like loud. that. That, yeah. that confusion it's, is it, literally it, what I'm going yeah. for. That's the aesthetic, man. It's, it, it's not people to look at and be like, whoa, but but it's man. not. It's not like when I think loud. When when I think of a, a loud shirt, I think of like neon orange and green. Yeah, like those are loud, or like a shirt that's too busy. There's some bottle words here. Okay. This is actually a single barrel, by the way. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't I didn't say didn't that. No rum did that. This is number 15006. Yeah. Yeah, this is barrel number 15006. Yeah. This clocks in. You ready for this? Yeah. Hold on to your seat. Yeah. You're not holding on to your seat. There it goes. No, not that seat. The other one. That one. There it is. 131.3. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's not just a rum. It's a high proof rum. Definitely never had rum that high proof. That'll be interesting. Well, guess what, buddy? Mm. We're going to do it. You want to hear some bottle words? Kick it. The Mississippi River was the main artery of North American spirits distribution. Feel good so far? Totally. Whiskey was shipped downriver from Memphis, and rum was shipped upriver from New Orleans. With River Set Rum, we have combined the profiles of these two spirits by finishing imported Caribbean rum in our River Set Rye Whiskey Cask, allowing the vanilla and spice notes from the whiskey to mellow the rum's inherent sweetness, adding depth and complexity. Bottled at cast strength, River Set Rum is designed for the experienced drinker, I think we qualify, who appreciates high-proof spirits, I think we qualify. River Set Rum is not for the faint of heart. Mm. Go against the current and push limits with us. There's always more room aboard this ship. Cool. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. So they're taking their River Set Rye, which the Blue Note is BR Distilling. River Set Rye is their rye line, and that's what they're aging this rum in. 
Interesting. So they're sourcing it, you think, from Venezuela and then aging it in their own ex bourbon casks. Ex rye casks. Ex rye yeah. casks. So I don't know what Which makes it. Interesting. A, I wonder yeah. if Blue Note does a rye. Uh, no, it's River Set Rye. Oh, it's River yeah, Set it's, Rye. Yeah, it's, it's BR That's Distilling. Right. I've seen River Set Rye. Bourbons and Rye. Correct. Interesting. So okay. I don't know what separates a Venezuelan rum from a Martinique rum from right. a, you know, Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah. Well, I think they're all sort of Caribbean. But I, I don't know what the differences in rum are. Right. But I'm interested. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You yeah. ready to crack into it? You know it. Okay. That's a good pop. <laughs> a little dribble on the face. A little dribble. It is a synthetic cork. Yep. I, I think blue notes are too. Hey, Delicious. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. There's one for me. Those deep glugs. I just realized how much you poured in that glass. Yeah, it's Good pour. <laughs> you didn't say God, but it's, I didn't, it's, 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 good pour. If if I put this on the side, I, I, think you, I think you did it right. I think it's right to the bowl. Ooh. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think you did it just right. Wow. They're not not as hefty as you might have thought. For those of you not on YouTube, what we've done is we've taken our our Glen Cairns, we've pushed it on its side, and just enough to get the the liquid up to the very rim of the glass. If if you are on YouTube, isn't that sexy? Do you know you could do that? You can. Yeah, you can. You just got to pour if you, it. If you do it right. Yeah. You got to pour it well. Which, uh, thank you for complimenting my pour. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I mean, you know, you, you, you for talking about the heftiness. Me. Yeah. No, no it's, I it's, think, it's I think about right. Hit it right on the nose. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, what do you got on color? Just in terms of brown liquor, I want to say it's on the lighter side. Straw. In, in the heavy straw. Yeah. Though. I was going to say, like, in the glass itself or in the bottle itself, it's, it's, it seems darker in the bottle, right? But it could just be like what we have it up against here on the uh, in the whiskey cave, right? But uh, when you get in the glass, and you hold it up to to the studio lights here, man. Like, yeah, it's it's heavy straw. I like that heavy straw. Yeah, it's yeah. like water that's soaked straw water for a while. Yeah, it's been in there for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, you okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. You good? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. It's just got, check it. Got weird. <laughs> <laughs> it just got weird. I don't know. You, you gave me a weird look. Like no way, dude. Yeah. Okay. What do you got on the nose? You know, whew, I got to be honest. Like, if, if you would have said that this is a rum, or actually, I guess, let, let me put it this way. If you'd have just hand me, handed me the glass and said, yep. what you think? I don't know that I would have necessarily immediately said, oh, that's rum. Absolutely not. Nope. Like, it's definitely got a rye characteristic to yeah. it. Yeah. And almost like, I feel like the, the predominant note is caramel. Well, when I think of rum, I think of like heavy sweet. Yeah. And like sugar cane sweet. Yeah, exactly. Which that's what I want out of a rum in terms of like that's the flavor that I want, the flavor profile anyway. But out of this, it feels or it smells like a bourbon. Yeah. I get more rye. I was going to say, yeah, maybe you're rye whiskey. But I don't know that I would necessarily just immediately go, oh, yeah. Oh, that's totally rum. Yeah, if you threw this, like if you're doing like just nosing and you weren't tasting, right? I, I bet you, like you wouldn't be able to say, oh, that's actually a rum, right? And and to be fair, like we're not super well versed in rums, but it just feels like a, a rye whiskey. Yeah, well, I mean, it, in comparison to that rye three, right, that we've had that we've featured, I really kind of want to know those nose those together to see how similar they really are. Well, we got the bottle. We do have the bottle. You want to nose them together real quick? Let's do it. Okay. I mean, we, it just makes sense. We're talking like, about we're, we're talking about science. <laughs> <laughs> Go grab that bottle real quick. Lucky for you, not that we planned this, but I've got two extra Glen Cairns. Real cork. That's that's pretty interesting. All right. All right. All right. All right. All okay. Right. So go back to the nose real quick. Yep. It, it it's soft around the edges. It's like a rye whiskey that's super soft around the edges. I don't know if that's a sweet coming through, but it's just like friendly around the edge, edges. Indeed. And like for it to be as high proof as it is, it doesn't smell like super no. stringent. No. Like it's pretty easily nosed. Again, I feel like you could give this to, you know, an average whiskey drinker and say, hey, here's a rye whiskey. And they'd say, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting Some, rye. A little, a little off about it or a little different about yeah. it, but like, yeah, no, it's rye. And I mean, like the proof is there, but like you said, it's not like, holy crap, hold up, 131. It's like, huh, a bit of proof there. It doesn't make you tear up when you nose not it. Not at all. You know, like usually those super high proofs, that first nose, you're like, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. No, this, not really. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful nose. I like it. Man. All right. So now go to the Rye 3. Okay. Rye 3, 
for everybody. It's a rye whiskey aged in rum. So yep. it's the, the opposite of what River Set is. The rye totally. comes forward really strong here. Totally. And when you go back to the River Set now, oh, you're able to nose the rum yeah. better. Yeah. That's so that's cool. That's so weird. That's, that's awesome. All right. I'm going in on the palate on the River Set. Damn. Right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm not a huge rum fan. That's delicious. But that's pretty damn delightful. Yeah. Wow. Which is really nice. Okay. Right off the bat, you get this really, really good earthy sweet. That's where the rum comes out for me, where you know, hey, this is some rum. So you get that really nice, good, earthy sweet, but then it's complemented by the proof. And that's where the proof spikes through. It's like, there's the proof. Earthy sweet is such an interesting modifier, Mm. I I guess is the best way to say it, but like, earthy sweet because like i initially thought it's kind of almost mapley syrup <laughs> which sweet, is also an earthy yeah. sweet sure you know like that there there is like it's not an artificial sweet it is more of a naturalistic yeah that you, you can tell like this is a sweet that came naturally well i, I think not about a created like what i mean by that is you think about like white sugar it's a a, a, a processed sugar and it taste different than like a demerara sugar right or like sugar in the raw it tastes a little more earthy it's a little more woody it's a little less refined because well that's what it is honey honey exactly the same like i've had honeys before where you taste like the different i mean the terroir if you will of whatever flower or plant that those bees have been getting the pollen from sure so to me when you think about an earthy sweet it's imparting the the nature of the sugar cane Far more readily than, again, like just a, a white sugar would. Yeah, totally. Man, where'd you find this? Um, this was at the the same store that I've been getting a lot of these barrel selects from. And it's a single barrel, and that's where I got the Stellum. That's where I got the Blue Notes from them. Right. They, they're, their barrel picks are legit. Yeah, no joke. What, what do you think about the finish? It's pretty great. Yeah. There's even like a, a rye-esque bitter on the end of it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, w- I certainly wouldn't consider it to be like a strong bitter. Right. It's a very subtle bitter, but I mean, it's definitely there. See, for me, on the back end is where it finishes like a rye. I get some of that like like menthol y note. Sure. It's, it, it could be partially because of the proof, but that's where I get some of the piney, some of the little bit of the menthol, some like just whiffs of cinnamon. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely not forward throughout the entire sip. It's just on that back end. My tongue is like legit reacting to it as if I just poured honey in yeah. my mouth. Like yep. it's very sticky and clingy. Yep. 100%. Very oily. Um, but just stupid delightful, man. It really is. Here, here's my thing. This is a rum for sipping. Sure. This is not, to me, not a mixing rum. In fact, like I made a, a drink with this. The proof is nice, but you don't get the nice, beautiful rum characteristics. Right. Because like when I think of a rum drink, I want that really heavy, earthy, dark, sorghum, syrupy, demerara, sugar nature. Sure. And like, I mean, for me personally, like I don't know that I've had a rum that I really considered like, let me sit back and think about this. Right. Because generally, because it is just what... which. I could be completely naive about this because I don't really know a whole lot about rum. Sure. But I'm assuming that it's just sugar cane. Yeah. So it's just that one kind I of think so. note coming yeah. through. And generally my experience with rum is like, oh, no, that, that that tastes fantastic, but it's one note. Right. And so it's kind of. Well, and I think that that's where I'm going. Like when you think about a rum, it's rum mixed in fruit juices and things like that. Sure. So you're accentuating the, the nature of the sugar. Right. But you're also getting all these other things. Right. Whereas this, maybe it's because it's aged in those rye casks. That's what I'm thinking. You're getting a lot of interesting there's notes some, to think about. There's some depth. Right. Like, I don't think this would be as good if you just gave me the, the Venezuelan rum at 131. I don't think so either. Because it's going to be one note. But yep. because of the rye casks. Oh, it's you're, you're, making it very interesting. Yeah. I'm going to, this is not something we normally do this early, but I'm going to run back to the rye three real quick and just kind of like. Nose and, and sip and just compare. Whoa. You're one hundred percent right. Even on the palate, the the rye three is accentuated in the rye and the the uh river set rum is accentuated in the <clears throat> rum and they play off each other really well. I know, man. I d I don't know if I've 
recently anyway, found a better pairing to have two wow. things together that complement each other so well. Yeah. Like the rye three pops the rye. Yep. Where you go back to the river set and now that honey rum is accentuated, but they're so kind of comparable at the yeah. same time and have similar essences going on that they communicate with each other yeah so well like and that i mean is it's, beyond interesting it's also nice that they're you know within 10 points proof points of each other right so give or take so you you get some of those you know yeah the notes that are accentuated on both ends the rye three is a lower proof but that spicy rye nature kicks a little little yeah. extra push it over the top that's that's delightful that's fascinating yeah like, there may not be a better pairing that i can think of that we've done that's Fantastic. That's crazy cool. So back real quick to the the uh, the river set. Yep. I am really, really interested in this. I mean, like swirling in your glass, the legs are just so slow. Uh, you know, obviously the sugar content is very high here. Right. I find this fascinating. Yeah. Because like, first of all, as not a r- uh, rum person. Right. This is really interesting to me of like, you have a rum that tastes like a whiskey, but also has the rum nature and is also at 131. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is definitely in that category of dessert. Oh, um, for sure. You know, finishing nightcap. Yep. Kind of beverage. I feel like if you were to pair this with like a, a like a deep like Maduro cigar or something like with a heavy, heavy smoke, yep. this is going to cut right through that that smoke's going to cut right through it and you're going to have a really nice pairing there if you wanted to do like that you know after dinner drink cigar kind of thing i mean a thousand percent like you know sweetness level it's a 10 out of 10 oh it's yeah. sweet it is very desserty mm-hmm. and like i mean you know just because i don't genuinely like raisins all that much right i would much rather hit this up than a cognac you're not wrong any day yeah well and, and to be fair like we haven't had a cognac at 130 a cognac at 130 could be a good spot. One one thirty. Well, this is one thirty one. So I'm saying, oh, like, okay. like, if we had a high proof cognac, like, like one thirty in the afternoon. No, <laughs> no, I don't get it. I'm saying, like, and what I mean <laughs> no, by yeah, that is, yeah, like, yeah. okay, so a if you had a, if you had a rum at eighty, you're not going to feel the same way. If you had a rum, you know, yeah, rum at one thirty one. So Agreed. if we had a cognac at one thirty one, for sure, maybe we'd sing a different tune. Yeah, I need some more of this. Do it. All right, Kyle. Now that we've got. A great drink. Indeed. Like, surprisingly so. Good call. More so than I would ever have thought. Isn't that the most satisfying thing? Absolutely. In what we do. Mm-hmm. In terms of, like, all these bottles that we buy. See, I just preemptively knew what you were going to say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, we, we, we buy these bottles. I agreed with you before. I knew what you were saying. <laughs> you knew where I was going. I absolutely did. To, to buy a bottle and find that thing to be interesting yep. and, yep. you know, satisfying this this was a situation much like you had recently where i went in not expecting to buy a thing right dude behind the counter a a store i've come to respect right a store that i absolutely uh, respect their uh their selections dude behind the counter was like do you want to try our new uh oh he had it he had it for you to try yeah so pour me a little pour me a little uh would you have bought it without that never right no yeah no and then like so i tried it i was like Oh, yeah, that's coming home. Right. Brought it home, had it when I got home, and I was like, yep. Game decision. Danger. Like absolutely like, like good decision. Yeah. Yeah. And and that the satisfaction, like you said, the satisfaction of that of like finding something new, finding something that's delicious. Yep. Man. Can't beat that. No. That's that's the best. That's the best. All right. Absolutely. So now that we have a good pour. Yep. What do you want to talk about this week? Um, it would be remiss of us to avoid the conversation of all of the Marvel (laughs) shenanigans, geekery, uh, (laughs) nerd ality that was released on us over the past weekend. Yes. Which granted, whenever this comes out, you know, it's been, uh, it's been about two weeks since it's been been a little while. We we got a lot of Marvel information and you know, let, let's just call a spade a spade. Sure. Like, you know, it's a spade. We're, we're in that nerd culture. Absolutely. Uh, and we, we are here for it. I'm here for it. So <laughs> we should talk about it. All right. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so Kevin Feige yep. stood on stage at the San Diego Comic-Con. He did as uh, as kind of his 
what they do. They haven't done San Diego Comic Con in, in a minute. Oh, really? It's been a few years I because they, they they've been focusing on the D twenty threes. Oh, that's which right. That's still coming up, and there's still plenty of things that they can hit at there. Interesting. So this might not be in terms of when we record. This might not be the full Phase Five lineup. I think it is the full Phase Five lineup, but okay. I'm sure that there are more trailers to come. I more gotcha. information. I gotcha. And you know, he went ahead and like gave all the dates for Phase Six, but sure. didn't didn't list titles there. So right. I'm sure there's there's okay. other stuff they're gonna say for D23. So Kevin Feige stood on stage in front of a bunch of nerds. Yep, and said, "Here's what we're doing." The nerdiest of the nerds and laid it all out at San Diego Comic Con. Yep, here's what's coming, Phase Five. Right. So before we talk about Phase Five, what do we have that rounds out Phase Four? Uh, so phase four that and, we are and real quick, if you, if you're not aware, Marvel goes in, in phases that that's kind of what they right. decided to call their divisions of movies. Correct. So phase four started with Loki. I think it actually, the first thing that came out technically in phase four was WandaVision. Okay. Yep. I think originally that was different, but because of the pandemic and everything, sure. They had to reorganize some of their release dates, and WandaVision ended up coming out first. It wasn't this the uh, Spider-Man right after? Spider-Man, technically part of Phase 3. Okay. So Te- that technically that ends Phase 3. WandaVision yeah. kind of begins Phase 4. Right. Okay. Which we've, we've come to learn now that this next three phases of movies are right. called the Multiverse Saga. Correct. The yeah, first three phases cool. were the Infinity Stone Saga, the right. Infinity Saga. The Infinity Saga. And now we have we are into and working our way through the Multiverse, multiverse. Saga. Yeah. Which, so far, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go on record, and I've already said it multiple times, like, I, I go through phases of marvel sure we're like <laughs> so we're does like, marvel right we're like i I'm, I'm in it and then i'm like i don't who's coming out with what now like okay fine whatever um but i love this concept that they're playing with in terms of the the multiple timelines the multiverse as a whole i really enjoyed doctor strange it was a lot of fun. I love Loki. Uh, WandaVision is is kind of a revelation in um, to me Marvel with uh, Disney Plus and how they're working through that. And and I've loved everything I've seen so far. So how are we rounding out Phase Four? Phase Four comes to a conclusion with the sequel to Black Panther. Wow! It's Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, which I saw the trailer for. Oh, yeah. Crap. Let's talk about that trailer. Sure. All right. So that trailer. I, I can't think of a movie, especially within the realm, certainly within the realm of Marvel, but just within the realm of like um, cinema, yeah. Of that had to you know deal with a death of the major character, the character, yeah, right. your character, and you know, I mean, it's it's widely known like Ryan Coogler, the director of both the first and this Black Panther movie. Um, he, he, he wrote the movie Black Panther two was ready to go as if there was nothing wrong with Chadwick Boseman. Right. And then the devastation of his death of losing him. Yeah. And having to completely change the direction of that film and, you know, a, a character that had become so beloved yep. and such an integral part of this, you know, huge movie franchise to have to figure out what am I going to do? Not only to, honor that actor right. and and his impact but to also now honor the character and the story that I've created and the importance that exactly. these characters hold for a huge population not just only all of us but like specifically for a certain culture like what a task yeah to take on um but man this trailer yeah gosh dude like Goosebumps. I can see them. It's, Look at those. It's wow. incredible. It really it is truly such a is. beautiful, like I put this on the other day from, from like we were sitting on the couch and like I looked over at my daughter. I was like, have you, have you, have you seen the Black Panther trailer? She's like, I saw it came out, but like I haven't watched it yet. And I put it on and my mom who has never seen probably a single Marvel movie ever watches this trailer and she's like, I want to go see that. <laughs> she's like, that looks beautiful. It does. It really like cinematically, it looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. Aesthetically it's a beautiful trailer. Yep. Like the, the, the visuals that they're providing, like 
of what you're seeing at the beginning of what is clearly going to be T'Challa's funeral procession. And like, I'll be honest, like I really hope that there's not a reason provided. Yep. I hope there's not a here's how he died thing. Yeah. I think, I think we just start the movie with T'Challa is, has passed. Yeah. And I don't know, like I'm on, I don't want to hear that it happened in battle or that there was an illness. Just let it be that he passed and we have to deal with that and See, move forward together. In, in terms of like respecting Chadwick Boseman, who was sick for many years and told no, no one. one. Yeah. Um, his agent. That was yeah. like the only person that knew. His age, obviously, was, is it his wife or his girlfriend? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure family knew. Family knew, but, sure, obviously. Um, Kevin but, Feige didn't know. Nobody n- in Marvel, no Ryan Coogler knew. didn't know. No one knew. Yeah. Right. And like, so on one side, like to respect Chadwick Boseman, I hope that they don't even address it. It's like, like you said, T'Challa has died and here's what's happening. Right. But on the other side, like in terms of storyline, I almost hope we get like a glimpse of, you know, some sort of explanation of what happened. Maybe they deal with that throughout the movie of like, you know, I don't know, flashbacks or or, or this, that, or the other. But like, I, I don't think they can do like, you know, so-and-so killed him in battle. I don't think they can do that. Exactly. Because it, it doesn't my point. make sense. I don't think we need an explanation for it. Just, we we all know, we all know he, we all right. know the reason why T'Challa isn't here. Correct. So let's not make up a fictitious reason so to maybe, explain it. Maybe they deal with it in real world. Like T'Challa had this illness. I don't even think you need to do that. Just, just say that he's dead. And he, that's how the movie opens sure. is with his funeral procession. We're all there. We all understand the circumstances of why we're here. So now Just it's like, how be. do we let's okay. deal with that? Let's yeah. absorb that. Let's honor that. And let's now, how do we move forward? Right. And like the music of the oh, trailer so good. is phenomenal. Yeah. And it it's really like, is. you know, the, 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 we move on together. Like don't, don't worry. We're going to move forward. Yep. Like amazing. Like this isn't the end. Like this, this person is gone. Yeah. This isn't the end. And I think that's such a good message that Marvel has, has dealt with through the death of these, you know, really tentpole characters. Right. Of like, sure. Cap is gone. Tony's gone. These black widows gone. These characters are gone and we're still moving forward here. The main theme of that trailer of everything's going to be all right. Right. And it, and it's not just like, you know, hey, you know, like this this bad things happened, everything's going to be all right, but it's it's also like together we we're going to come together and move forward. We're going to figure this out. And everything's going to be all right. Right. Like I it seems devastating right now, but everything's going to be all right. And yep. like what a, what an important like message culturally. Just culturally sure. and generally. Yeah. It's all going to be okay. everything's going to be all We're right. Going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So then we we move out of phase 4. But I think Wait, the, wait, wait. Namor. Namor. Can't wait. Like been waiting yeah. for Namor. Yep. Cannot wait to see what they're doing again culturally with that. Sure. And this kind of like Mayan type culture that they're going to be creating around his character. Yep. Who is the first mutant? Yep. Mutant uh in in marvel lore and we're getting that now yeah. we're bringing mutants in like well this, everything okay. about this movie looks so friggin' epic so do we have fantastic 4 in phase 4 too Mm-mm. okay they i think they start phase 5 okay no 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 this is phase 5 they start phase 6 okay okay cuz i remember seeing something like i mean this was a while ago that they were trying to push marvel captain marvel 2 and then um, Fantastic Four within Phase Four, and like yeah. ending it with that. But it ends with Wakanda yeah. forever, and then we move into Phase Five. Yeah, with beginning with a character that like I like the character, but and I know how central Ant Man is. It's Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Yep, and how central like all that is the the Hank Pym like all that kind of stuff is to how we've gotten here. But I haven't enjoyed those movies as much as like, I think, I think they're movies that you could skip to me. Okay. Like I, I saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, but like saw it on a plane and was like, eh, okay. 
I don't think I needed it necessarily. I don't think you needed it for the Infinity Saga. Correct. But I think but you do need, need it, for, it this? for this saga. Okay. Because they, they introduced the Quantum Realm. Right. This movie being Quantum Mania, um, they're gonna be. It sounds like they're gonna be spending a substantial amount of time right. in that realm. Right. And that's where they're gonna come into contact with the big bad. It seems like of this multiverse saga, right. which is Kang. Yeah. Which is interesting because, like, you you think of how they've introduced this multiverse aspect with the. Um, you know, some of the infinity saga towards the end of like, you know, the quantum realm and there are things that we don't understand things beyond our understanding. And now they're really expanding that out. Right. For sure. Right. Yeah. Like Kang to be introduced to a version of Kang in right. the Loki series. I, I've seen like a, a, a bootleg <laughs> kind of like somebody's <laughs> cell phone coverage of what they showed at Comic-Con. Yeah. And Kang the version of Kang that we're getting in Quantum Mania is a different Kang. Interesting. And he's they, very cocky and knows the power that he holds. Are they doing the the kind of the um they they teased Thanos for a while and then like the version of Thanos you got in the the teaser trailers or like the the end credit scenes was not fully the version you got? Is they is that the kind of thing? Or are they like rewriting the character a little bit? No, I don't think it's rewriting. It's just understanding the nature of the character. Oh, uh, okay. Kang, gotcha. Kang is a character who is aware of the multiverse versions of himself. Oh, and they're all okay. interconnected. I like see. they've they've gone back and like made connections with each other. So they're all aware that each other exists. Right. Interesting. And so the one that we saw in Loki, who was the he who remains right. was kind of overseeing the timeline and uh, trying to keep things in order. So he was almost like the good king. Sure. And and he even warned Loki uh, and Sylvia in that series of like, you don't want to see the other versions of me. Right. I think we're going to see the other versions. Interesting. In Ant-Man. So, so speaking of Loki, yep. I mean, there are a couple other things. There's, there's Guardians Volume 3. Yeah, which I've heard is like, when you finally get to see that trailer, it's also a very emotional trailer. Interesting. As well. Yeah. Which I think it should be. Yeah. After everything that we've learned has ha- kind of happened. You know, we, we got Secret Invasion. We've got Echo coming out as well. Yeah. Um, but then we got Loki season two. Yeah. What I'm interested also in terms of like what Marvel is doing is they're incorporating more of the Disney Plus series into the the formal timeline. Right. And we've had discussions of this. Like it is entirely possible that you've seen nothing on Disney Plus and that it all works regardless. Right. And maybe they're still doing that, but they've rolled it out as like, no, these are part of the next phase and you kind of have to do it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like if you went into Doctor right. Strange and Multiverse of Madness, right. would you have been totally thrown by not seeing WandaVision? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I don't I think, think it, so either. I think it enriches it, but I don't think it, it would have been thrown. It enriches it you know, substantially. Yeah. But would you have been completely like thrown off? I no. don't think so. No. I think it's that sort of a concept. Of, right. Like, the, they're using Disney plus to enhance and add flavor, but it's not a complete requirement. It seemed initially when they were ending phase three and they were beginning phase four, they were talking about like, yeah, and we have these Disney plus series that explain a little bit more. Right. Whereas this announcement was like, no, this is absolutely part of it totally and it may be like absolutely disney saying yeah hey if you enjoy sure this universe you need to go buy buy disney plus exactly (laughs) to get all of it to for it all to make sense exactly yeah and and i don't think they're wrong because like you know you go into a movie like you skip one or two marvel movies you go into a movie and you're like wait who the who what huh who's that guy right so Sure, it absolutely enriches. I mean, you can figure it out, but it absolutely enriches it. Where this, I feel like they're saying like, no, if you miss that, you're going to be a bit confused, maybe a bit lost. Yeah. I bet I bet Secret Invasion is going to be one of those so talk series. So talk to me about that. Like Secret Invasion is, from what I understand about it, like at, at San Diego Comic-Con, yep. it was introduced with Colby Smulders, who is a character. <laughs> Anyway, it was introduced and it, it explained that there are already scrolls all over the place. Right. And they, they start that trailer with Nick Fury coming in 
after like it's it's very clear that he hasn't been on earth in years. <laughs> Correct. Um so I think that, you know, knowing that the last I'm Avengers movie that's coming <laughs> totally. <laughs> knowing that the last <laughs> Avengers movie that's going to end this saga is Secret Wars. Right. I think we're going to be introduced to a lot of the themes and a lot of the the underlying nature. Well, ki- yeah, kind of like the the rules of the game for this series of the of the MCU. Right. Understanding that like no, that could be a scroll that maybe that's not the character that you think it is. Yeah. And just kind of introduced to like, here, here are the rules that we're playing by. Right. Interesting. So I think that one's going to be a, a pretty critical series to see, to understand that concept. So then I think what Marvel has been playing with for the last couple of movies in phase four, I'm going to call it like mature Marvel. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like if you watched the the Netflix series where you had Daredevil, you had Luke Cage, you had Jessica Jones, like these are like brutal Marvel things. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking like almost not quite to like the boys or invincible level. Right. But these are like Pretty mature, intense. intense Marvel movies. Yeah. And we start this with Blade. Right. And we I mean Well, you assume. We we assume. Right? I, don't, I, I, I mean, they, I, they I can't could, imagine. They could reel it back a little bit. I couldn't imagine that this blade will even be as <sighs> bloody and gory as the See, 90s okay. version Here, that we got, or 2000s. Early 2000s. Here, here's where I start to like, now I have some opinions. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm, I'm bought in. Like, I, I'm super stoked for Loki. Like, I don't even know how to kind of address Loki because I don't know what you're going to do. I'm just, I'm in. But... Now that Which you I have, think, I think the majority of that was done. It was supposed oh, yeah, to yeah. all have been it was supposed one to be big next season. Series. Yeah. yeah, like you've got the Marvels, like that's coming out, sure. But like Blade and Daredevil and even Agatha, who is the the kind of the bad in uh, WandaVision, like these characters are dark, and definitely Blade and Daredevil. Which, to be fair, I'm most excited for Daredevil because I love Charlie Cox and I love that series. Right. Like these are bloody and brutal and they're a lot to deal with. Right. And I'm interested in how they're going to, again, deal with it. Like you've, you've got a, a Wesley Snipes series. Like, are you just going to erase all that? Which is absolutely possible. But like these it's are, not, it's not erasing anymore. These you don't are, have to erase anything. That was just oh, a, a multiverse, multiverse. Right. <laughs> sure. Just another version. But like these, these are brutal, like deep, violent things. I mean, you're not going to uh, erase quote air quotes erase the charlie cox netflix daredevil because it's so good well yeah no and like and that's like the beauty of that next series that's coming out like the 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 subtitle sure rebirth right like fantastic yeah but but the, okay which but, is a but, comic but, run but, and you know who wrote that comic run who are frank miller frank miller yeah that's frank a miller. frank miller story interesting so it's dark that's what I'm, it'll that's be what I'm dark saying. yeah that's what for I'm sure saying. so like you can't. Throw, I think it'll be a continuation. You can't I don't throw think that at they're me gonna tame Daredevil. Stuff. You can't throw at me tame Daredevil. You can't throw at me like. I mean, there's a a scene in Daredevil. I think it it might be the end of the first season, maybe second season. I don't know for sure. But like, he's fighting this ninja dude and gets cut to ribbons. Yeah, it's brutal. I don't think they will. You don't think they'll do it? No, I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll back off. I hope because you know what just what just came out this week on Disney Plus. I do. Yeah. Daredevil, Daredevil, not Daredevil but uh, uh, Deadpool, yeah, and Logan, Dead, Deadpool two, they yeah, all rated our out. content on right. there as Marvel content, correct? So I think they're just setting it up as like, nope. So that's what I'm saying. Like that's what I'm keep, interested. In. I mean, we're going to keep this. They level. released, they released Luke Cage, they released Daredevil, they released Jessica Jones, all on Disney Plus, and said, did they put Punisher on there? Uh yeah, they put so Punisher then, on. Like, there. I mean, if they got Punisher on there, dude, yeah. I don't think they care. So, and they, they had that thing of like, this is not suitable for children. If you right. don't want your children watching this, change your settings. Like they did that. Right. And I was like, I don't care. Click. Yeah, I'm not a kid. <laughs> I don't care. Bring. But like in that case, I want to see Punisher stab a dude 20 times. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Ugh. But I mean, I do because that's, 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 <laughs> like that a, character. that's a character. Yeah, that's a character that yeah. like, I need to see that. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not, I'm not advocating for hyper violence, <laughs> but you know, I mean, come on. I'm not, I'm not like, you know, taking notes. <laughs> yeah, right. But like my point is, now, not that they didn't address it before, but it was like it was Marvel, but Marvel on the fringes. Now, with this, with Blade and Daredevil, it is absolutely canon. Like there is no denying it. It absolutely is. But I think 
you know, I think they can get away with more or they'll be willing to do more right. on Disney Plus. Sure. Whereas mm-hmm. like a Super major good point. Super theatrical good point. release like Blade is going to be with Mahershala Ali. Yeah. I think they'll probably tame it a little. Tame it up a little bit. I mean, to be fair, Marvel has gotten more violent since Iron Man. In terms of like what they're willing to show, sure. I'm not saying you know it's by any means the boys violent, but right. they've gotten they've gotten a little more loose, <laughs> right? But we're you'll never get that in the MCU, right? Ever, right? I, I, with I'm good okay reason. with that. Yeah, I'm totally. Good I don't with that, need yeah. that. Like I, I can go and watch the boys and exactly appreciate the boys, and I think we should do an episode on the boys because I, I find it really interesting. I agree. I, I wrote it down. But yeah, no, we'll never get that. And I, right. I don't. I don't need it. And, and you don't need it. We got close with Logan. Right. Logan really went. I haven't seen it. Yet. Violent. I don't know if we'll ever get that to the point of like we're gonna see that with any major MCU character. Right. So all right to round out Phase Five. Yeah. They have both Captain America, New World Order, which Kevin Feige promised that Sam Wilson. Uh, well, okay. Here's how he said it: Sam Wilson will be in it. He didn't necessarily say Sam Wilson will be Captain America. But I haven't seen specifically what was said about that film. I just watched like the presentation of like thing by thing by thing. He just like did little quips. Right. But I, I didn't see if anybody came out for that or right. if there was any kind of additional footage or anything. Right. I'm not concerned at that at all. No. I, I a thousand percent think it'll be I support it. Sam Wilson. Yep. One hundred percent. Um I think there'll be like the introduction 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 <laughs> of the new falcon correct like i think there'll be a lot of like follow-up i bet i bet winter soldiers in that yep like i have no doubt in all that i think yep. lucky will be in that not worried about that at all no and i think it's gonna be good i mean again you've taken kind of like the central character and you're starting to evolve that central character you're starting to morph that central character and make that character more in-depth and make that character i don't want to say better but more nuanced and well, I just, I'm so interested in that. Give, give it more. Give give that character, that version, and understand that like Captain America goes through phases right. of giving Sam Wilson's version of the character more provenance. Absolutely. And prominence. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And then we end, uh, is that Thundercats? <laughs> <laughs> Thunderbolts. We end with Thunderbolts in this phase. Yeah. In terms of like the release of the phases, and this is might be a product of COVID, but the, the last phase, it was all jacked up. So when they released phase four, they did so many shifting of things around. So like, who knows, is this actually going to be the end of phase four? It is right now, but they're going to end with Thunderbolts. What do you know about Thunderbolts? Just what we all know about Thunderbolts. Which Not is, a damn thing. Which is that <laughs> Julia Louise Dreyfus yeah. has been going around and like selectively plucking people to join her group. Yeah, which we saw in the, the Disney Plus series. And we saw it at the end of Black Widow. Very true. So we've already seen her selecting people. Which is kind of an interesting thing, too, because this is... I wonder how they'll do, deal with that. Of The Thunderbolts is named after Thunderbolt Ross. Right. Who and is, unfortunately, the actor just passed away not that long ago. Right. And so, like, the fact that that movie's not coming out for a, quite a long time. But, it, you know, I think we're still living in a world where, like, all of this content is stuff that was in the works. Correct. During the pandemic. Yes. So to know what was filmed and what, what they already had kind of arranged and things like that. Like, I'm sure they could just obviously like cover that in, in a, you know, unfortunately sure. uh, general Thunderbolt Ross has passed away and, 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 and they in, could, in his honor, we're exactly. going to name this group exactly. the Thunderbolts. Exactly. And then they could do like a, you know, here's who this character was. They could, they could figure out how to right. do that. Yeah. For sure. Um, but it, from my understanding, it, it is kind of a Suicide Squad esque gotcha. type gotcha. group of Marvel characters, gotcha. who are the almost like the B, the B list of the Avengers. <laughs> right. You know, it's like everybody's got like a similar take on the Avengers, but you're not, you're not, an you're Avenger. not really you're Steve a Rogers, hero, but you're not Captain America. You're sure, sure. Okay, let me ask this. I mean, with the the phase five, we're adding three, six, nine. We're adding twelve more IP. It looks like six and six, yeah. six movies and six series. So we're we're adding twelve new things. Yep. Is it starting to be too much? 
I, and I think that's kind of like a little bit of the beauty of what they're doing. Yep. It kind of depends on yourself. Right. If you want to take it all in, you absolutely can. Sure. If you don't want to, there are going to be things that you absolutely need to see for it to all kind of cohesively make sense. Right. And they know at this point in time, there's enough people out there that will, that right. will make it we're, worth we're it. We're going to keep doing it. That'll make it profitable. Yep. But it's, you know, it's totally within just your interest in the thing. Like, I'll be totally honest. At this point in time, I haven't seen Miss Marvel. Right. I haven't watched that series Me yet. Me neither. I want to. Yep. I haven't heard necessarily great things about it, but I know that, like, understanding that story right. will improve my viewing of the Marvels. Correct. So I want to eventually at some point see that. I haven't yet, yeah. but I've got, I've got, uh, I've got some time to, to work that into my schedule. I think about at what point do they jump the shark? Like at what point does it just become too much? And, or does that point even exist anymore? Cause you, you've got people us included who want to continue to consume this media or at some point does it become like, no, nope, like you, you've made 37 fast and furious. Okay. We're done here. I think they're, they're in a point right now to me where it's like phase, phase all of phase four seems like it was the reaction to infinity war. Right. Oh, good point. All of yeah. these stories are in reaction to that. So it's like if you were able to consume that and understand it, now you're ready to move forward. Right. And like I feel like the the next two phases, if you've got a good handling, and even if it's not even really that great of a handling, sure. But you just kind of understand that like there was this version of the Avengers, and that happened, and. Even, even honestly, like even if you don't even really understand of like what happened to Iron Man, what happened, even if you just understand like there was a there was a battle and right. they won, and here's a new starting point. And You're good to go, and we're going from here. So it's almost generational that saga, in that case too. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, interesting. And it's whether or not you just feel like you want to be a part of that. So that's that's kind of I guess where I am. Like I'm I'm interested. Like I want to <laughs> I want to believe, and it just the it. Mm. It just becomes like, how engaged will I be as this all unfolds? Right. Like, I love seeing the layout. Yeah. If I'm 1,000% honest, like phase five, I'm not as hyped about personally. Okay. I'm way more excited for phase six. Right. But as the nerd that I am, I know that I need to take in, or at least that I want to take in, all of phase five that I can to be better prepared to right. enjoy phase six well and and officially they haven't released everything in phase six very little right they've said like these things are on the horizon these things are a possibility they gave us they gave us a date for fantastic four right and they gave us dates for the next avengers movies correct and titles correct but there are a plethora of dates yes. that they also gave us with no nothing, titles. Nothing to it. Like, here's, this is on the horizon. Could be some X-Men. Sure. Who knows? Sure. Who knows what's in those dates? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, you know, you, we've said this before, you get some great movies and you get some like, eh, Thor Dark World, which makes a lot of sense. Just but not it, a great not even movie that at it, the time. Not even that it makes sense, but the relevance Correct. that that movie had for Endgame exactly. was it had more relevance than any other movie before it. But you didn't know that at the time. Right. And, and that's, uh, to me, like, that's also what's interesting about these different phases is, like, you could go through, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 could be a stinker. I don't think it's going to be, but it could. And then you're, like, maybe it ties into the the last two Avengers movies that we're going to get in Phase 6, and it ties into that, and, like, that was a pivotal turning point, but we don't know that. And that's to me like uh, that's kind of the brilliance of what they they've created here Agreed. is that e- all right so say you didn't see thor the dark world right but as you were watching Endgame, there were some moments that you were like huh what's going on and so you went back and you watched thor the dark world <laughs> exactly and then you enjoyed that movie better because you're now you're watching it in relation to your on experience with in game exactly and it's now providing you with information to better enjoy that movie exactly and so like the same thing could absolutely happen here of like you know what i didn't watch the series echo right because i had no clue what that was about but now that i've gotten to this point in phase six and i see how important i'm interested daredevil in is exactly to understand that echo is connected to that character that i love now yep i want to go back and i want to watch that absolutely 
Yeah. And that, which that, is what comic books have been doing for generations. Yep. Yeah, 70 plus years. No, almost 100 years at this point. Yeah. Like, legit. Like, man, I really like this character yeah. in this run. I want to go back and read the run that where this character was created. Correct. You know, like that's what they've been doing the whole time. They're just applying that now to movies. Good point. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got anything else? No. No. I don't. I, I don't either. You know what does have a lot of other things, though? What's that? Our Patreon page. Man, dude. I know. How was that for a segue? Did you like that? I like that. <laughs> it's smooth. You. I think Real you. smooth. I, I worked on it for about the last half hour. Smooth as a fresh jar, Skippy. That's another reference going back to Bruno Mars. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got it. So there's a lot of cool things happening on our Patreon. Yeah, for sure. There's some uh, uh, questions and responses between the two of us. Yeah, not sure what we're calling that yet, no. but it's going to be a series that we do. In its infancy stages. Yeah. There's uh, some literally fresh infancy. Yeah, there's some fresh crack Fridays going on, like fresh bottles we're opening. Brilliant. I know. There's uh, bottles that we'll never feature on the podcast just because, you know, we've got a lot of things to, to talk about. Sure. That will feature on Patreon. Or something that we haven't talked about in a long time and we want to go back and revisit. Absolutely. So if you're not part of Patreon, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, you really need to get on there because yeah. it, that that's where the cool stuff is. Yeah, for sure. There's a couple levels. Just go check it out. It's patreon.com slash Stone. See what, what fits best for you, but there's a lot of cool stuff up there. Absolutely. Yeah. Join our community. We're so, going gonna to welcome you with open arms. So all of that to say, we want to know what you think about Phase five of Marvel. Yeah. What are, what are you most excited about in phase five? Are you like me and you're kind of just kind of looking past phase five and looking forward <laughs> to phase six? Or are you like me and you're like, man, I need that next Daredevil series because yeah. I'm super interested in it. Totally. Yeah. Let us know. We also want to know, what do you think about the River Set Rum finished in rye cask? Man, this stuff, I think it's pretty great. I'm in, super impressed by yeah, it. Yeah, me too. So let us know what you think about it. Yeah. I mean, if you're somebody that enjoys whiskey, bourbon, and rye, and you're looking to like expand sure. your horizons, like, dude, absolutely, this checks every box. Yeah. Well, you can get in touch with us through email. It's dreppinstone at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through social media. It's always one word, dreppinstone, D-R-E-P, and stone. Come find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you like to hang out. YouTube. YouTube. We got some stuff up there. Yeah. Come find us, like us. Share a thing, like a thing. Yeah. Comment on a thing. And we'd love it if you support the podcast. Again, that's through our Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Stone. You can also support the podcast by rating Drippin' Stone wherever it is. You find great podcasts like this one. And finally, Kyle. Sir. You can support the podcast by yelling at someone. Right. Respectively. Well, res- right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying like just, you know, get in their face and just, nah. Yeah. N- hey! Yeah. No. Yeah. Don't do that. But but like if if you're a good distance from them, sure, back like, up. Yeah, you, take a few steps back. Hey, you heard about Drop and Stone? Yes, sir. Good, me too. Oh, cool. Which episode's your favorite? Probably the one that they did on uh, James Bond. Weird, that's my favorite too. You want to go get a drink? You know it. Yeah. Just hey. like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's how that's done. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass overflow and your ass never show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. <laughs> you did the top of the bottle? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, very, very seductive. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So I got on my Hawaiian shirt. I can see that. It's very, I'm like, I'm like, it's very you know, pretty. I'm going all out on summer. I can see this. that. Like it's like the end of summer. It's like full force summer. <laughs> this is like the equivalent of the, of the Christmas sweater. <laughs> beautiful green uh customs tape on it sweet which i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> that's called florida that's, yeah, a, that's a disney channel that's a, yeah joke yeah, for yeah you. <laughs> well you've made that before i might have cut that out before and i might have cut it out again <laughs> who knows you think that's gonna come through i don't know i'm cultured